because I'm sure people will want to see this after the fact. So um, this is our uh, teaching and learning call for Wednesday, August 17th. And um, today we're going to have a preview of the new 2023 20, portal. It's getting a little bit of echo there, so I'm not sure if anybody has their speakers turned on. Um, so Kanal's going to demo that for us. And then if we have any time left, we'll do some JIRAs. Um, but the bulk of the session I, I plan to spend on, on looking at the portal and talking about that and plans for the, for the new portal. So um, it's a small group today. So hopefully um, some people will take advantage of, of the recording once that's out. And um, let's see, we'll, we'll start off with a, a, just a brief announcement about the Sakai Virtual Conference. Um, we are planning to do that again in November this year. And uh, I haven't yet picked a time for our group to meet. So if you're interested in participating in the planning for that, please let me know. I'm going to send out a poll probably today um, to pick a meeting time. So um, we we welcome anybody's participation, large or small, depending you know how much time you have. But uh, you know you can participate in small ways as well, and you don't have to feel like it's a huge time commitment. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, does anybody else have any other announcements right now? No. No. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our main event, which is the uh, new portal demo. So, Kunal, do you have um, presenter? Presenter. Yes, yes, I have. All right, guys, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so welcome everyone, uh, and, uh, and those of you who don't know me, my name is Kunal Jakam, and I work with Sakai UI team. And today I will uh, give you a quick demonstration of our new Sakai portal. It's uh, still under development, therefore some things can change for good and <laughs> might might not fully work right now. So that's one of the reasons actually we are here today so we can have uh, your valuable feedbacks and we can work on it. So let's see. Uh, I will demonstrate our new portal design on both a uh, bigger screen and a smaller screen devices. Uh, and the reason I will do that, because this time we have tried to make a uh, user experience similar on both devices, whatever you're using, uh, doesn't matter if you're using on a smartphone or computer or iPad, uh, you'll feel like uh, it's a similar experience. And uh, in a second, you will see what I'm talking about. So now let me share my screen. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we're yes. Seeing looks it. great. Looks great. All right, thank you. Okay, so you, uh, as you can see, this is our new portal. Like before you log in, this is what you see. And I'm starting with the desktop screen right now because uh, I guess most of our users are on the desktop. So the first change you will notice is our new sidebar. So this is our new updated sidebar. And here we have our new navbar with updated login panels. And the sidebar, uh, there's not much change. It's just, uh... OK, Dr. Chuck is asking to zoom. Let me try. Is it better? Because if I do more than this, it might mess up with the UI. Can you see it, Dr. Chuck? Um, I yeah. can see it. I can see uh, it. It was Bristol that was having trouble, but it zoomed just fine when you zoomed it. So let's let's see hear from Charles Bristow and see, yeah, he says it's better. All right, okay, thank you. So here's our new sidebar. 
Now we have uh, some works going on over here too. So right now it's just work with the accounts and the most important features like reset password, you can log in and everything. And uh, one other thing that you will notice is we have moved collapse uh, button from bottom to top now. It just makes it uh, much better and it looks modern. And now I'll move to the login panel. So the login panel has, uh, uh, this looks awesome, but it has some cool functionality too that we have added. And the first thing that you'll see is now you can choose to hide your password or view it. You can just click in here and let me show you. You can hide it and choose to see it. So that's really cool. And another thing is uh, if you have caps lock on, it will tell you that your caps lock is on, it's a cap, cap lock sign. It's just better to avoid like password mistakes that we make sometimes. That's another cool thing. And now I will uh, show you the same uh, in the mobile view. Like uh, let's say, let's choose iPhone 12 Pro. Can you see this screen guys? Yes. We should, yeah. Thank you. I know it's a small, but uh, just uh, you'll get the idea. So here we have login button, and there you see the pop up. It's quite nice, and works with the same feature: caps lock, hide, and everything. Forgot your password. Nice design. Here you can see your gateway sites. You're welcome. All of the features that you have, it's hidden until you press this button and now let's move to let's move past login let's log in and after you have logged in you see uh, another cool updated sidebar and navbar with some buttons and then let go uh, with, uh, with each one of them, one by one. So again, I'll uh, start with the sidebar. And sidebar, uh, this time we have added pin and unpin side. You don't, uh, you, you, there are lots of sites, you can pin it and pin what's important. And this will show the current side. So here you can just unpin it and pin it, whatever sites you need over here. And is the new icons. You can see your sub sites, parent sites is linked to. We are still working on uh, connecting the tools, so that might not work right now. And you can collapse the sidebar. It's just clean now. And now I'll show you. Uh, I'll tell you about the buttons that we have over here. It's a help help button which uh, gives you uh, instruction about the tools you are using. So even if somebody is new, they can understand how, how to do what to do. And then we have new search bar over here. And the first thing uh, that we I would like to show you is it, this time it will tell you how much uh, minimum character input that you are supposed to enter. Like if you enter just one, it will tell you, please match the format requested. Please enter at least three characters. So this is cool according to me. So now I'll do some search. Let's say enter three. Very good. So it's like results. And to navigate through results, you can use arrow page up and down buttons to go through the page results. You can search the result with by both pressing enter and clicking on the search button. And you can just go escape, and there you go, it's gone. Oh, now this is Qq uh, links, another cool feature. You can put all of your uh, links over here that you need to access like quickly. Then you can just put it all in. It's still working. Uh, in, it's a still work in progress, so we have to implement. But it's coming with the new portal. You should know. Another we have uh, our notifications. 
not much but just new styles and everything it's cool and now here you can modify your profile preferences and we also we have also added uh, sakai widgets over there so here you can see your tasks calendar your grades there's nothing right now but you can see it and we have actually thought of uh, giving it uh, more options to customize it you can add whatever you need over here but not right now maybe later so that's cool and yeah we can let me show you the foot uh, the footer it's not uh, much change in here except uh, this uh, server information is now updated that's much cooler now you can see uh, sakai versions server time server name build info i like this a lot accessibility information so these are all actually it was in our previous uh, versions too and those new changes i just showed you and i can show the same in the mobile view or iphone 12 or any small devices you can search in here Paint sites. Your sub sites in here. You can just close it. So uh, I guess I covered all of it for now. Uh, if I miss something, please let me know. And I guess, yeah, that's it for uh, today portal demo. So thank you so much for joining. And I love, I would love to hear your feedbacks. Uh, feedbacks are important, negative or positive. So please give us some feedback. It helps us a lot as a team, as a company. And once again, thank you so much for listening. Over to- Thanks, Kunal, that was Eddie. great. Um, I have a couple questions actually. Can you go back to the desktop view? um how does the pinning work um because right now it looks like are all of those pinned or does the little push pin yes. show up uh, only if they're a pinned site yeah yeah let me show you that so right now if you go in here you see all the sites actually we are uh, planning to implement this in here that you see this button View all my sites. Once you click in here, it will show all the sites and you can pin over there too. So, right now you have to uh, come here and pin. Let's see if you want to pin this side. Go in here and then you pin it. So, that's actually a work in progress. But uh, this is another way that you can pin it as of now. So, by the time gonna... you... okay. yeah, sure, go on. Go ahead, Dini. So, if you're in a site, you're you can pin it. At that time, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Can you change the order of the pinned sites? Like drag them into a specific order. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Now I, I, <laughs> I was just asking yeah. if there's a way to order the, the pinned sites. Yeah, yeah. So I was saying, actually, I was on mute. I didn't realize. So yeah, uh, we, I guess Marcus is working on that. And even if it's not, I guess that's really cool feature. So thanks for suggesting. We'll add it. Uh, it looks like yeah, it would be really useful if we can just uh, put it in order the way we like. So thanks for suggesting. One one simple approach, if you if you don't want to add drag and drop, um, is have the pin sites uh, be pushed down most recently pinned. And then if I wanted citations admin to be the top, then I would go to citations admin, I would unpin it and repin it. And so if there was a way to say just unpinning and repinning pushes it to the top, that it, I, I've seen that in other systems that don't have drag and drop reordering but unpin and repin because the unpin doesn't actually make it go away. So if you would, if the gesture were unpin citations, repin citations, 
So go down up citations and then unpin it and then repin it. Pin it again. Pin it. Now hit refresh on your page. Yeah. Did it move it to the bottom? Yeah, like take, okay. take like the middle one and unpin it and repin it. You keep on it. Just do one. Unpin and repin and then hit refresh. But if I unpin it, then it won't. No, 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 don't un no, no, no. <laughs> unpin it and repin it, and then hit refresh. Unpin it, repin, and then hit refresh. Yeah, it's working. It, see, it went down, right? So, so it went down by unpinning, and repinning. So, I would say that most systems would say that that gesture of unpin, repin moves to top. Yeah, and I would agree. Uh, the most uh, recent I would say that's a way around, but it would be uh, better if you have like if we have five or seven sites, then it would be hard to just uh, unpin and pin it. We can just yeah. No, I'm, I'm not saying a drag and drop's a bad idea. I'm saying that I if I look at say Coursera, Coursera loves pinning as a gesture. They don't give you a drag drop. They, you know, they don't make a general drag and drop because general drag and drop is hard and it's hard to make accessible, right? And uh, and so the notion that an unpin repin is your mechanism, given that you don't have to do it too often, and then maybe in the view all my sites you have a whole another thing that's got a drag and drop thing. So, but that's okay. The, I, know, the, uh, I guess that so you, now you have this picture. Yeah, no, no, but I just so I bet there's an order by in there, and and that's the order by a pin date, and I think it'd be order by pin date desk. You know, I bet there's code in there. Because when you un, if you right now unpin and repin Mercury, and then hit refresh, it will put Mercury at the bottom. So something's happening. Something's happening. I think you got an order by service that you could flip, right? Whatever the order by is, because clearly it's keeping track of when it was pinned somewhere, right? Okay. We'll take a look on that. Thank you. So yeah. Well, we have to we have to look at it right now, right? So, and, and you said earlier that the tool links aren't working, right? But that's just kind of a momentary, like if you click on dashboard, it's just not going to work. Uh, oh, some of them are work yeah, some of them are working, some of them are not. So we are oh, actually, I see, I see. if you see this working, uh, maybe uh, me, I am or Marcus are working right now. So we are in the process to get it working. Like, but that looks maybe like the you haven't shown me anything that didn't work yet. <laughs> But you're saying there's some of them that don't work. Yeah. That's pretty good. Now, the overview might be problematic because the overview is um, if you go like into Mercury and then go to overview and Mercury, because overview is go to the top, go to overview. And we'll see which and chat room is just a normal a JSF tool. But if you go into overview, that's a weird tool. Yeah, and so the weird the that's a weird tool, and the problem with overview is that is a very old style tool page layout with three tools on it. Okay, so that's not a tool. That is a page a page with three tools on it, and there's something weird in the CSS at this point. And so, but my guess is it's not too badly broken. This is a CSS problem, almost certainly. So the fact that you're rendering all this stuff and it's not like giving you a trace back, that's a happy thing, <laughs> right? And and so that you, we just got some CSS that's not quite right there. If it gave us a trace back, that'd be harder to fix. But if the CSS, like the direct link and the short URL and all that stuff, that is something that you don't have styled the right way. And frankly, part of the reason we have spent so much time working on dashboard is to eliminate this dang page which is a page from 20 years ago that used iframes and, 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 and moving to the dashboard, which has taken us too long, moving to the dashboard allows us to eliminate this page. Um, but we'll have, to, but that's a, that, that is a, um, I, yeah, I totally agree with Didi. So, yeah, I, right, Didi, because it's it's problematic in so many ways, right? And so, 
and, and we go straight to the uh, lessons page, which we've made default, and that's our template. That's our first thing. Dropped yeah. all the other tools on, gave them a, a, a use the you know yeah. the date and templates in the text editor to give them a place to update all about them, and off they go. So um, yeah, I mean, I lo would love the dashboard to be working because I I really like that idea of yeah. having one page be about the site and the instructor, and then the rest of the lessons being about the lessons and the class and the content. Yeah. For a course site, absolutely right. For a course but site, yeah. Overview, I, I, I'll be honest, I do not know why we are holding back just making dashboard the thing and saying buy overview and putting it in our rearview mirror. But Didn't you know, we have problems with the images showing up properly, yada, yada, yada? There, there probably was, Dee. Dee. <laughs> I was yeah, just... I think there was also some stuff missing from dashboard. So they've been adding widgets to kind of yeah. add in other things that weren't there yet. Yeah, we might find ourselves in a position where for 23, we just want to make dashboard it and 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 move overview into our rear view mirror, at mm -hmm. least for newly created things and say, OK, it's 95 percent there. And, you know, we could do a bit of a survey to say what Didi said. And that is like, hey, shh, does anyone really use this stupid thing? I mean, this thing anymore. <laughs> and then we can sort of walk away from it and it might mean that in Trinity is a good time to walk away from it. I mean, and we got to make it work in Trinity, but, you know, just Trinity is a good excuse because Trinity has this mental model of single tool. And so much of Sakai except this overview button is a single tool. I bet probably nobody on this t call knows how to set up a multi-tool page. I do because I'm I've been here since the beginning and that used to be how we did stuff. I frames were the winner there, so but that's okay. They, they certainly were. Yeah. It was the answer in two thousand and four. Not anymore. So oh, I will share the branch with you, Doctor Chuck. Maybe you can. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it because we got to talk about how to get this in in a safe way. Because mm -hmm. this is so damn good that we can't we can't leave this on the side of the road. We got to get it in um in a way that allows us to have a safety net but i'm i'm 99 sure we can make that work can i ask a, a question on what you've got there is my tasks my calendar my grades that you're showing on the right hand side are those the widgets yes i do have the widgets those are and those are the dashboard those, dashboard the, widgets yes 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 like yes Son of a gun, right? So you've got your dashboard in there. I like it. I'm so glad that's reuse. I was so worried that that wasn't reuse. Yeah. Hey, they're web components, right, Didi? Uh, actually, we have thought we can make this uh, more customizable. Like, uh, oh, yeah. Thing that's my task. Maybe we can add something uh, more to this list. So. Uh, institution or schools we use it, they can just look around here and get it. Yeah, we might put that in like view profile even, right? You might that might be because we got it or manage preferences. You got we got places to modify that. You know, I, I I'm just I'm, I'm I love sort of implicit modification of this stuff, but it it is a UI lift from an accessibility perspective to just have interfaces that turn into edit interfaces by just a little tiny action. And then all of a sudden they've got to go from accessible interfaces to accessible edit interfaces. And that's painful. That's painful. And so, you know, I'm not opposed in my mind to saying, we're not going to make this drag and drop. We're going to have a managed preferences and, and have a thing that's a drag and drop in there. And it's only purpose is to reorder things, right? And to add a new one, there's a little screen that's just about adding a new one. And we just make it super accessible, you know. And simplicity. I mean, it, we get we look at something like YouTube, which is just a single page application, and they got all this like implicit crap all over the place. And the answer is, yeah, if your entire billion dollar company has exactly one page that matters, you can make that stuff all fluffy and interactive. But so I, I love it. I'll shut up now. Yeah, any more questions? 
Dr. Chuck, thank you for all of your questions because those were things I would not have considered um, asking about. Um, with the task and the calendars and the grades, um, uh, can you can you display that in mobile again? Sure. Thank you so much. Okay. So. And which icon did you click on to get to there? Like if you start at the quote yeah. unquote beginning. It's this home button. Home button in the middle. Okay. Yeah. And there it's really you see nice. This. That looks it It's a big deal. Uh, actually, by the time it will get in masters, this calendar will look much nicer because we are working on styling. So Lovely. it will get better. A better yeah. calendar. Nice. <laughs> Okay, um, and then the search, do that again for me in mobile. Okay, great. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Ah, I see why the dashboard doesn't look quite as lovely. Um, beautiful work. Really, I'm, I'm so impressed. Yeah, it looks really great. Very um, you know, modern and uh, clean. It's, it's look, nice that was overview, right? In in mobile overview looks funky. Click on overview. Yeah, overview. Is that overview? No, it's no. not. I'm not sure overview came up. You were clicking so fast. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that looks weird. It looks funky, but it looks funky in the regular one, too. That's astounding. Yeah. No, I meant the overall UI looks clean, not a review. Overview is a mess. <laughs> yeah. But we'll fix that or get rid of it, one of the two. Yeah, just for the reference, it's still work in progress. So obviously, it will look much better once we have our final version. So the, the notifications, are those um, like bullhorns or is that? other notifications yeah it's bullhorn alert uh we have a markup working of uh, notifications right now but i didn't include this uh, in the demo right now for purpose because it wouldn't look nice but uh, mm -hmm. this is how it should look once it's uh once we get it working thank you Didi. absolutely Does the visit all my sites in the lower left hand corner do anything or just blow up? Uh, have... <laughs> no, it, we haven't added the button. Oh, you haven't done yet. Yeah, okay. Just a false click. Okay. Okay. It's okay. It's a work in progress. I just. That's just <laughs> going to display the, the site list by um, term that would normally be under the um, profile, correct? Yes. Uh, let me show you in here. Sakai 22. Uh, see like view that. both sides. Okay. So that's the same of what I was expecting that it would display. That's fine. That's great. Yeah, so if, you'll ha if you have a page like that, will there be a pinning on that page? Kind of like yeah. the favorites? Yeah, like even in here we have favorites and all. Uh, We'll have that, but uh, there are some things that I think will change. We still have to discuss. But it, uh, just imagine this, uh, like in um, with this uh, style and fonts, everything cleaner. But it will be kind of like that. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm trying to ours. imagine how people's favorites will translate over. No, so, no, like ours and the pins are going to be the same thing. It's just yeah. we've switched to a pinning as model as compared to favorite, right? Yeah. So if you go to that, if you go to that little uh, grid thing, you'll see, I think that basically that the stars, instead of clickable stars, they're going to be clickable pins. Yeah, that would make sense. And, you know, and other little things might, you know, yeah. Well, other, actually a good comparison, what we have right now with Morpheus and how it will look like once we transition to Trinity. 
Yeah. I love that you don't have a huge list of courses at the top. <laughs> it's so much cleaner. The saving yeah, like, of the real estate on the screen is yeah. so nice. I, I really like that a lot. Because I constantly am going into people's sites as them and helping them. And then I'm like, would you like an inch and a half back on your screen? Because you still have stuff from, you know, to all everything's favorited and they uh, never let it go. Can you collapse the, the tool menu again? Just, I want to see what it looks like with that. Does it disappear completely? Yes. Until you pull it back in? You click on here and then it comes back. Excellent. I didn't then click on Mercury site there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, no, 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 hide it. Hide it. Click in the, um, click on Mercury site in the, uh, Right Red crumbs. Thank you. Yeah. So that gesture probably ought to expand it. Right. That probably ought to auto expand. If you go to the whole site in the breadcrumbs, it probably ought to auto expand. Yeah, because you want an easier way to get to the tools. Yeah. It ought to auto expand, and then it probably ought to auto expand the the carrot next to Mercury site. So you you can go, you click on the word Mercury, and then you can go to another tool in two clicks. And then that should that should look like this, but then auto expand the Mercury site so you can get to any tool. No, expand the Mercury site so you see the list of tools. Yeah, so. Clicking on Mercury site in the breadcrumbs probably ought to get you right to here. All right, so if you're if you're closed down and then you click on Mercury site in breadcrumbs, it ought to get you to Mercury site as current site with, and open it up so you're going to tools. Oh. I'm not getting you. That's okay. Uh, it's okay. It's Okay. If you're talking about you pin it, you pin it. now, you got to pin it back before we refresh. Now refresh the screen. Hide the thing. Hide hide the left nav. No, don't unpin it. Don't unpin it. Click. No, don't unpin it. Hide it. <laughs> now click on stop. Click on the word Mercury. Right there. Now what we should see. Click on expand. Yep. Now click on the expand by Mercury site. Go left, go left. It should directly come here when you click on Mercury site in the breadcrumb. With it expanded, all right? So yeah, because a, a new user won't know necessarily how to you, get to any of the tools. When you click on Mercury site, you're likely wanting to go to a different tool in the breadcrumb. Yeah. And so if you say, I got, you got two other clicks before you see the tools, that's not a good idea. But that's not hard to fix. That's just some JavaScript. <laughs> That's not okay, okay, I got it. It'll fix it. Well, don't don't make it a high priority. You know. But before we uh, finalize our PR, PR, so yeah, these are the fixes that we need to fix. Yeah. Thank you so much for pointing out. Well, we'll. I, I think what we're going to want to do though is um, do this every couple of weeks. You know, not maybe every week so that you don't, we don't overheat you because <laughs> we, can, we can go blah, 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 <laughs> give you a list of things to do like really quick. So we don't want to talk to you every week so you get a chance to make some progress on stuff. But we might want to just kind of have a almost a standing uh, every two week review like this of what's the latest to help you know to see it and come out with little to do's for you and and then uh, actually we can have this every week uh, thursday uh, we test our progress we saw what we have done so if that day you guys can join us it would be lovely to know uh, oh i see you're doing. already doing that yeah we are already doing it you just have to join i'll be there thursday yeah, i'll be there thursday all right thank you 
Can you share the meeting details so that a it can be recorded in this presentation and b that we can uh, recopy it and remind people and put it on their calendars? I think it's on the community calendar. Yeah, yeah it is on the community calendar, but it's, it's usually a technical call. So a lot of um, more uh, you know, end user functional folks don't attend. Um, but if we let them know that they can pop in to see progress, you might get some people, um, you know, Maybe what, to see. maybe what we want to do in that meeting is basically say, let's treat it like kind of like a core meeting where we'll go high level for a while. And at some point, you know, when everybody wants to view source and, you know, to try to fix stuff, then people can drop off, you know, after 15, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, just like you can come to the first part and we'll review what's new. And in the last part, if, if it is, it'll turn into a technical meeting, but we'll tell people they can drop off. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. We can just uh, show our progress, build right there, and talk about it, what we have done this week. And yeah, and after that, we can discuss the other coding stuff. So, yeah, that sounds good. How to get stuff fixed and, you know, what, what did, how did that web service work? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people might just want to listen and, uh, and not participate. I'm still lurk. <laughs> trying not to use that word. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very cool. So we'll, we'll announce that and let people know that um, that they can drop, drop in for the first 15 or 20 minutes on Thursdays. And that call starts at 9.30, am I right? Uh, I have to check. You are right, you are right. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Kanal, for showing us uh, what you guys have so far, and it looks great. So, um, you know, we're of course we're gonna like you know point out the tiny little things and ask lots of questions because that's what we do. But <laughs> but it really sure. is a good effort, um, and it, it looks um, tremendously nice. So you guys have done some really good work. Sure, thank you. It actually helps because even though if uh, we are working, we point out the things like in our code, in uh, Marcus code, we just point out, okay, maybe we can do this. So if you guys point out, it just uh, becomes much more faster to work on. So thank you so much for doing it. Dee Dee says she's still clapping. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. So let's see, it's about, uh, we have about 20 minutes left. Do you guys want to end early or do you want to take a look at some Jira's? I have a question. Yeah. That is teaching and learning related. Okay. So this fall for the first time since 2016, I am planning on uh, using Sakai in production at the University of Michigan using Sakai Plus plugged into Canvas. And um, I'm, I'm pretty good at all the technical bits. That's, that's what I'm working on. But I wouldn't mind having uh, an, a, a highly skilled Sakai instructional designer tell me how to best use Sakai, because I'm terrible at using Sakai. I'm terrible at using Canvas. I'm terrible at all this stuff, I can make it work. But I see so many cool things like in the Sakai conference of ways instructional designers really make Sakai look freaking awesome. So I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an instructional designer on my campus, uh, not surprisingly. So <laughs> I'm curious, like what, <laughs> ouch. Does anybody have any ideas about how I could get some help? Um, well, I could help you. Um, I'm sure there's other folks like Dee Dee that work with instructional design that would be willing to, to take a look and, and kind of give you some tips. Yeah, I mean, partly, I mean, I would like somebody who is used to taking a faculty member who's new to Sakai and wants to make a nice class. What? Does someone like Dee Dee or Wilma or Julianne say to them? And is it like a thing where they just go like, oh, shoot, here's the YouTube video that I made? Or 
you know. Yeah, well, usually when I when I work with faculty, I, I'll kind of do a consultation with them and just kind of see um, what they have in terms of content and what their learning objectives are, what they're trying to accomplish, what they want the students to do as far as activities, learning activities. And so then we just kind of, you know, compare the two and see, okay, here's the content you have, how could this best be presented? And maybe there's certain tools or certain, you know, um, method of presenting the information. It really varies depending on the content. Um, but that's how I usually go about it is kind of first talking through the process um, with the instructor to see, you know, what's the end goal and then kind of work backward from there. Yeah. So like when Didi said, yeah, we just make it all lessons. I'm like, what? Like, oh, I, you know, and so, you know, that the notion that a course is just lessons. I mean, this is, this is not something that is in my mind is even a possibility, right? Ah. And, well, that, yeah. that's that's interesting. We all are looking for ways of, you know, improving to meet the needs of the faculty. The lessons pages are the biggest, most visual, impactful items. When we went on co on COVID, we had a requirement to build what is called an um, a robust site, which meant that there was a requirement of tools that had to be used for the faculty during COVID, and what they had to fill in. And the easiest way that we could do it was to build a template. Um, where they had three options and um, and then show them do do training sessions on how to use lessons and building the content from the lessons pages like oh you have to build a test and quiz well here you go and oh you have to build an assignment here you go let's see your materials um, and let's see what you had and what were you doing face to face because a lot of that can be translated online for example we had a music teacher who didn't know what to do mind you you couldn't sing <laughs> and that was really hard uh so what they did was they um we use penapto here is they did audio recordings in um the discussions tool uh forums at the time and um had the and the students answer in mass in the discussions to discuss the you know history or background or how that uh, particular musician or composer wrote it um and or sung it uh, as the case may be so that was just you know most of his his stuff was um pdfs of sheet music and um and discussion forms but th those can be displayed beautifully if given the opportunity on a lessons page yeah lessons is so flexible that it's really um you can tailor it to any course um, so that's, I think, the beauty of it, because you can make it look the way you want it to, to best highlight the, the features in that class. The instructor builds the pathway for student learning. Okay, so maybe the right thing to do, and, you know, it, I, I'm sure you are both very, very busy right now, because, you know, it's coming like a giant train coming at us, known as the September train. Um, <laughs> So both of you are busy. I'm just wondering if um, maybe I could start with Wilma and get like a half hour of Wilma. And, and, and now that what you said, Wilma, I, um, I think I know. I think I can show you what I do in Canvas. Because mm -hmm. it's the same class. And then you can say, oh, here's some things you could try in Sakai. And then I can go off and try them. So it wouldn't have to be a real long thing because I've got it organized. It's not pretty. And I, you know, part of what I want to do is I want to showcase what Sakai does well to my students. And so I'm going to, I got a grad and undergrad class doing the exact same thing. And I think I'm only going to run my undergrads through Sakai and run my grads through Canvas. And so I'm going to be A, Bing it all the time, not because uh, it's an experiment, but more because I only want one. <laughs> <laughs> if something breaks, you only have to deal with one class. <laughs> and I'm going to guess my undergrads will be more uh, forgiving, and uh, then um, so. Okay, so yeah, how, yeah. just um, make an appointment with me um, for a time that works for you, and you know, we can take a look at your stuff and go from there. Do you have like a magic scheduling thing, like Josh? Or yeah, do you... I do. I'll send you the link. Okay, okay. And then Didi, I, I once I do that, I may want to like borrow a half hour of your time as well and go through the same exercise where I pretend that I'm just one of your faculty members and I show you my canvas and you go like, whoa, here's how you do it better. You can do that way better in Sakai. 
So okay, plus plus is looking good, and I'm I'm I think I'm gonna make it. I just I think I'm gonna make it, <laughs> which will be amazing if I can put that in production at Michigan, and not perish in the attempt. <laughs> well, that'll be a huge uh, huge yeah. boost, I think. Yeah, to yeah. be able to to say yeah. that. So very cool. Okay, thanks. All right, so we've only got about 10 minutes. I, I say we end early because we don't really have a ton of time to start digging through JIRAs. So if you guys are good with that, you can get about 10 minutes back up to your day. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us today. I know it was a small group, but I think it was a really great discussion. And thanks again, Kunal, for showing us um, the progress so far on the portal. It's looking awesome. Um, so uh, we will um, reconvene in a couple of weeks. I don't think we have a topic for that date. So if anyone has any suggestions, feel free to add them in the Etherpad or to let me or Charles or Dee Dee know um, between now and two weeks from now for our next teaching and learning call. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day.